without further ado, Mr. Jack Bivier. Bivier. Jack's going to be doing a presentation tonight where he will imply win-win negotiations and strategies to achieve his goals. He will, be, he will also like to enjoy the benefits of win-win negotiating. Mr. Jack Bivier. Thank you, Mr. Toastmaster, fellow Toastmasters and guests. After working through the humorous speech manual, I know it's always helpful to start with a humorous story. But the only humorous story I can think of in negotiation is not appropriate for Toastmasters. <laughs> so, so leave that for another time. My first experience with negotiating is when I bought my first car. I knew that going to a car lot was a was a risky thing and that you had to know what you wanted. And all I wanted was a car that provided transportation. And I made it a point that I didn't need turn signals. I knew how to stick my arm out the window and I knew how to do that and I knew how to wave. I knew all the rules that were appropriate, applicable in those days. So we struck a deal. I took the car out. A few days later, I'm out driving in the country, and I have a flat tire. And I go around, and I open up the trunk. There's no spare tire. When I finally got back to town, I went back to the car dealer, and I read him the ride act. And he says, wait a minute. You wanted just a car. <laughs> just transportation. Isn't that right? Yeah. Well, that's exactly what you've got. <laughs> so when you go to negotiating, you need to know what you want. And it's a skill. Negotiation is a skill that can be learned. It takes practice. Some people are good at it, and some people aren't. And my first experience convinced me that I wasn't too good at it. <laughs> but negotiation usually winds up in one of three scenarios. You either get a lose-lose, or a win-lose, or a win-win situation. One of those three situations is where the, where the negotiating will wind up. When you're negotiating for something, you need to know three things. You need to know exactly what it is you want including the spare tire. You need to know what the other person wants. And you have to, maybe you have to ask questions to find out what they want. You know, in a car dealership, it's pretty easy. But if you're negotiating with, with someone to, to buy, the, buy their furniture, there's a little negotiation that has to be done there. Yeah. Going for a raise, you have to find out what the, what the boss wants. You have to know these different situations. And then you have to understand your options. What are the options? What can you give, give up? What do you want to take? The, there is also the, the scenario that you want to set up. You want to negotiate in the morning, because that's when people are more acceptable to new ideas. You want to negotiate at a neutral location, if at all possible, or at least a, a uh, setting that they want you to have. You need to break the ice when you're negotiating with somebody to sort of develop a rapport with them. You have to make them feel comfortable. You have to use words like, I need your help. I'm the one that has the problem, and you can help me solve it. You don't want to make them feel like they're losing or they're being a sucker. You have to work around it. And that's essentially the scenario for a 
for negotiation. It's going to be a lose-lose, a win-lose, or a win-win situation. Now, negotiating has, has been called haggling, and it's been called bartering. But if you're going for a win-win situation, I can't resist to point out that, that back in 1776, Adam Smith wrote The Wealth of Nations, and he drew up a win-win situation which is called free trade. But that's not considered proper today. Anyhow, we're now going to have a, a little negotiation here. We're going to have set up a scenario where Steve has something that I want, and Steve's going to tell me what it is, and then I'm going to try to negotiate the model. Uh, <clears throat> dance lessons. <laughs> <laughs> you don't need it. <laughs> Hi there. My name is Jack. Hey Jack, my name is Steven. Steven. Nice to meet you. I understand you're the uh, dance instructor here. Uh, of course, in this group of, yes, I am. Yes. Have you been doing it for long? Mm, you know, about. Five or so seconds now, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <Good problem. laughs> what got you into interested in dance? I was after the girls, actually, and I hear there's a lot of those in dancing, so. And does it work? I, you know, I gotta tell you, there are a lot of ladies out there. A lot of them tend to be a little, you know, a little bit more towards your age bracket, I'd say. <laughs> might be something for me to consider. I haven't found it that way, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> but you will find yourself I'm learn, learn how to dance. Do you think you could uh, teach me? Sure, certainly. Anybody, anybody can learn to dance. Oh. Absolutely. It, it's pretty easy, huh? It's, it takes some skill and coordination, a little bit of thought, but everybody can pick it up. Do you have any athletic background? Anything that you do that... I can walk. You can walk. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's about half the yeah. dancing, actually. Yeah, and I, I, I swim a little bit. There you go. Would that help? Yeah, that definitely helps. That applies directly because you're using your yeah. whole body. What, um, when, when do you get these lessons? There, whenever you want to book them, I have a pretty open schedule as of now because I've only been in business for about, what, 35 seconds? <laughs> <laughs> Well, I don't know if I want those days. <laughs> <laughs> well, we could set up something. How about on a weekend? If you have that? Yeah, weekend would be. Weekend, weekend, weekend. Weekend. That doesn't interfere with your swimming at all? Yeah. No, it didn't interfere. I do, I do the swimming during the week. Oh, fabulous. Yeah. That's where the sound. What kind of dances would you teach me? Do you have an interest in any? Just one that holds the girls. Well, I, we got all those, any of those. I'm thinking you're a rumba guy, though. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe cha cha. You have to guess me tonight. Oh, no, I, I don't. I don't want to do cha cha. I'd rather I'd rather go and swing. Swing? We could do that too. There you go. We're set. Well, you you've got everything. And uh, what do you charge for these lessons? Right now, my my starting rate is thirty five dollars a lesson. If you buy a what? Group. <laughs> it's an hour long lesson to get crack. Well, well, I, well, yeah, but that's pretty expensive. I provide a, a partner that's not me, also. You're going to be Fuma. I thought this was a straight class. <laughs> <laughs> well, how about if I drop yeah. the right there? <laughs> Good luck. Thank you, Steve. Thank you. <laughs> We're now ready for two to three minutes of question and answer. Anybody hits if we uh, two max everybody enough so they don't have any questions? And quick side, I knew Steve would have a question. Was, was your goal to finagle those lessons out of him as yeah, cheaply as you could? Way for as you could you know? Yes. How but I was trying to warm him up, get him relaxed, and get him on my side as 
So you could understand that I couldn't afford $35 an hour. It, it didn't happen during this scenario, but what advice do you have if, if the negotiation turns sideways, you know, if people become antagonistic? If they become what? Antagonistic. You know, if there's, you know, Conflict. Conflict. You revert back to the first project. <laughs> I can converse with anybody. <laughs> And you, you, you try you try to defuse it. You, you mm -hmm. try to uh, look for what they want mm -hmm. and present it that, that would, something that they would go for. Mm -hmm. You don't you don't put up a brick wall. So in this scenario, you both are negotiating with each other. So he needs to look for what you want, and you need to look for what he wants. What did he want? In this particular case, yes, he wanted, he, he wanted a student. And what else? Was that all, or? I mean, he wanted $35 an hour. That's a good rate. To teach the rumba. <laughs> You'd like it. <laughs> it's a darn good rate. I thought it was a good rate, yeah. I'll more. Is there no more questions and answers? There's a question right there. Oh. Did you agree to that rate? The $35 an hour? No, I went down the street. <laughs> <laughs> I, think I, I, was, I was going to, to counter off them with, with 15. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> because they, 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 they say that you should always cut the price in half. Oh, wow. Because then that, that gives the the other person an opportunity to come down a little bit, and you can come back up. What was your when when I gave out the price? What was your strategy to get me lower? I, I kind of missed it when I was in the role play. I would I would have offered you fifteen or twenty bucks an hour. You know, I think you ran out of time, didn't you, before you could do that? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah, but that's what what I would have done. And now that we're out of time, are there any more questions? Toastmaster. Oh, there was a toast. Oh, actually, I just wondering if it might not have had a lot to do with who this supposed dance partner <coughs> Stephen was going to procure for you. Procure? <laughs> <laughs> well, well, we did have a little problem with that. <laughs> <laughs> At least it wasn't me. He's going to provide us a partner. <laughs> I think that yes. would have been interesting. Would that have made a difference on like your $35 offer? Yes. Yeah. That's what I'm getting. Well, it might have looked off. That brings me back to the joke that I started to use to open. <laughs> 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 open the program, but we're not going to negotiate on that. Thanks, sir. <laughs>